Hello there and welcome to this Dr. Frost Maths video on graphs of y equals log of x and y equals ln of x. Now hopefully you already have some familiarity with uh, what logs are and if you're not then I advise that you watch my video on that first. But let's dive straight into question one and we want to sketch this graph here. So y equals log base 2 of x. Now the shape is quite similar regardless of what the base of the log is but let's do a table of values to try and see what it's going to look like. Now first note that you're not allowed to log a negative value so there's no point in having negative values of x here. You also can't log 0 either. But we can log values less than 1 though, so fractional values. So let's have say an eighth, a quarter, a half, one, two, four, etc. And then let's consider log base 2 of each of these. So what is log base 2 of an eighth? Well, if you do it on your calculator, it's going to be at minus 3. And that's because 2 to the power of minus 3 is 1 over 2 cubed, which is an eighth. Now, what about a quarter? So log base 2 of a quarter, 2 to the power of what is a quarter? Well, it's 2 to the power of minus 2, so that'll be minus 2. This will be minus 1. Then what about log base 2 of 1? Now, you should know that log of 1 is always 0, so this is 0. Log base 2 of 2, 2 to the power of what is 2? Well, it's 1. And 2 to the power of what is 4? Well, it's 2. And then let's just plot all of these. So we said an eighth minus three, which is down here, a quarter minus two, which is here, half minus one, which is here, one zero, which is here, two one, which is here, and four two, which is here. And we can see that the shape is like this. So you can see that it tends towards negative infinity. It passes through one, so the x-intercept is one, and then it gradually gets more and more shallow, but it's still constantly going up. These y values will still be continuing to go up. So that's the shape of a log graph. And I know that the, the overall shape will be the same regardless of what that base is. So if I wanted to sketch, say, y equals ln of x, remember that just means log base e of x, if you haven't counted that before, and e is just a constant, so it's just any old base. And that's gonna have the same shape, so it's gonna still look like this, and the important thing is that the root, the x-intercept, is going to be 1. The base just changes the scaling of the graph in terms of the vertical scaling. And note, by the way, that if you're familiar with the idea of inverse functions, that the inverse function of ln of x is e to the x. So if I was to sketch e to the x on the same graph, it would look like this. So that's an exponential graph, and you're familiar with the shape of exponential graphs, even from G to C, for example. And you may be familiar with the idea that if you sketch the inverse of a function, that it should be symmetrical with the original function in the line y equals x. So if you ever forget what a log graph or a ln graph looks like, just imagine y equals e to the x or any old exponential graph, and then just reflect it in the line y equals x to get the log graph. What about these other questions here? So 2. Sketch y equals log base 2 of x minus 5, and we want to identify any intercepts with the axis. Now, can we see that this is actually a graph transformation? Because we know how to sketch uh, log base 2 of x, as it looks like here, but can you see that the x value has been replaced with x minus 5? So the change is inside the function. Now, when we saw graph transformations, we saw that if the change is inside the function, it affects the x value, and it does the opposite. So the opposite of minusing 5 from the x values is to add 5 to the x value. So it's going to shift this graph here, right 5. So let's do that. So instead of going through 1, it's now going to go through a value 5 greater, which is 6. And notice also that we've got an asymptote at the line x equals 0, or the y-axis. We don't draw it because it overlaps with the y-axis. But now, because it doesn't overlap with the y-axis, we do have to draw it in. So that asymptote, x equals 0, is going to be shifted, translated 5 right. So now it's going to be here. So we've got this asymptote x equals 5, always draw in the equations of asymptotes, and your curve is going to be the same as before, but like that. What about the next question? 
sketch y equals 2 ln x minus 1. Now we know what a ln graph looks like, it's just a log graph, that kind of same shape. Now let's think what this transformation does. Well, these changes are timesing it by 2 and the minus 1. They're both outside the function. So that means the y values are going to be multiplied by 2 and then we're going to subtract 1 from the y values. So when we multiply the y values by 2, it's going to stretch like that, and then the whole thing is going to shift down. So it's overall going to kind of look a very similar kind of shape, because the x values are not going to be affected. So it's still going to have this vertical asymptote here, but it's kind of shifted down, which means that that x-intercept, that root, is going to change. So we're going to have to use um, a bit of algebra in order to work out what this new x-intercept is. Now we know to find the x-intercept of a graph, we just need to make y zero. So if we make y zero here, zero is two ln x minus one. Let's add one to both sides. Then we're going to half both sides, so we get ln x on its own. And then in order to undo that ln in front of the x, we do e to the power of both sides. So we get e to the half is equal to x, because the e to the power of gets rid of the ln, it cancels it out. So we've got e to the half, that's all the square root of e, and let's put that here. So it's the square root of e, which is a bit more than 1. And then finally, question four, describe the transformation from y equals log base 3 of x to y equals log base 3 of 2x as a stretch and as a translation. So it's interesting that actually this transformation from here to here could be thought of two different types of transformation. Now in order to get the stretch, notice that the x has been replaced with 2x, and that change was inside the function. So we know that's going to affect the x values, and it's going to do the opposite. So it's going to half the x values. So we can describe that as a stretch parallel to the x-axis, and it's going to be by scale factor a half. But we could also do this as a translation as well. And the way to do that is to use laws of log. So log base 3 of 2x. Now we use laws of logs because that's log of a product. Do you remember that log of AB is equal to log A plus log B? So we could write that as log base 3 of x plus log base 3 of 2. Yep. Or added the other way around. So we can see that we have the same graph as before, we've got the log base 3 of x, but we've added log base 3 of 2. Now that addition is outside this log function, and therefore it's going to affect the y values. So we can see it's going to translate it upwards by log base 3 of 2. So therefore it's a translation by, well the x value is not changing, so it's 0 in this vector, and then the y value is log base 3 of 2.